Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Vintage Cube Draft, where we have a very good start. Mox Pearl is excellent. Second best Mox, in my opinion. Great in blue-white control and in mono-white, which are two of the best decks. Mana Vault's good. Dig Through Time is good. You can lead on a Pestermite. Gilded Goose, but yeah, we'll take this. Um, in terms of the cards that we're passing for the two archetypes we're most likely to end up in, the white aggro cards here are quite bad. Adeline's fine, but there's, that's the only one. Um, and then also the blue control cards aren't great. Dig to time's fine, but again, not amazing. So that's a good thing to note. All right. Now we have a few options. Derogatory speaker is good. There's Narset, although it's the only blue card. Very likely that the other person took a blue card as well. We could take Elspeth or Sungold Sentinel, the two white cards, to go with the white mocks. But I think I like just taking a fetch land here. They're both on color, sort of. I mean, we don't really have a color, but... We kind of do, and I think I'd rather take the Arid Mesa. I think red-white is generally a better deck than black-white. Uh, there's two really good red cards in this pack. If this was a Mox Ruby, I would take the Bolt. But I think given that it's a Mox Pearl, I like taking the Arid Mesa over the Bolt. And then we'll see. The most likely thing is that we end up in Mono Red or Mono White, but we don't know which one's open yet. We know that whoever to our right did not take either one, but just the fact that they're not taking red or white doesn't mean it's open. Ooh... Okay, so here we have a few options. Teferi is amazing. I love this card. So we could just still go blue-white. I think blue is not super open, but there is a daze here. Like, maybe it's somewhat open. And then there's a skull clamp if we're playing white aggro. But honestly, it looks like the aggro cards are getting taken here. We There's two red cards. That, I guess the red cards might be open, but I don't see, like, a great white aggro card. Yeah, I think I like taking the Teferi over the skull clamp here. Yeah, let's go with that. Now we get another interesting pick. There's a second fetch, Steam Vents, Path, Thalia, Gideon, lots of options. I kind of like taking the Windswept Heath here. No, we should probably just take the Path. Although, hmm, this is very close. Path to Exile is very, very good. Yeah, I think Path is better than Windswept Heath here. We'll, we'll take the Path. And then if Thalia comes around, we might end up being aggro, uh, but we could also still be control. Now we take a Thraven Inspector, good pickup. Good in aggro or control again. I would, I, like, I'd much rather be getting cards like Path and Thraven Inspector than a Danto Vanguard and whatnot, because they're just much more flexible. If this is the only blue card we end up with after the first pack, we'll just, like, abandon that thing. But we didn't miss out on that much by passing Skullclamp, probably. Um, and then we'll see if the Thalia doesn't come around. Then someone else is playing some sort of white aggro deck, and we can play... We might still be base white, but we can be base white, blue eye control with some good card draw and a little bit of counter magic, and that's a good deck. Okay, another card that's good in both builds. Mana Tithe is excellent. Um, Inspired Idea is fine. There's also a sword. These are both good sideboard cards, but let's definitely take the Tithe. I really like how flexible the start is. We also could just be, like, a white beatdown deck that splashes blue for Teferi in opposition or something, or Time Walk. Um, that's definitely a, a, a path we could go down as well. Okay, Council's Judgment. Intrepid Adversary is fine, but Council's Judgment is better. Again, both in Control and in Aggro. This is a hilariously open start. I really like how my two most, uh, my two most popular decks are both, like, open at the same time, sort of. There's a really late Vryn Wing Mare, though, so maybe that's a sign we should go in that direction. There's also Plateau if we wanted to go Red White and a Braid. But Vryn Wing Mare is very, very good. And also, if this comes around, that's a good sign Thalia may as well. In which case, I think we're cutting this. Okay, the, the one white card did wheel. Now, do we see Thalia in the next pack? Actually, no, the next pack was the Teferi one. It didn't really have any great white cards before, so we're not going to wheel anything. Almost definitely. If Skull Clamp comes around, that would be awesome, but that is very unlikely. Love this card, but... Okay. Oh, no. Okay. Whoa. All right. I thought we weren't going to get a good white card in this pack, but we got a couple. Um, yeah, I guess it was the next pack. That was the bad one. Elspeth is good, but we have Vryn Wingman. We're hoping to play Thalia, too. I think I'm going to take the cheaper card here. I do love Elspeth, but I, th I think being low to the ground is really important. Wow. Now we get the Skull Clamp on the wheel. Okay. This deck is looking awesome. 
Dahlia would be a huge wheel from the packet we had originally took Path out of. Yep. Yep. We're gonna get a trophy. I would be so shocked if we don't trophy with this deck. Armageddon, another card we'll play. That makes me feel better about passing the Elspeth too because this is, uh, I don't wanna have too many four drops. Showdown of the Scalds. All right, so white is very, very open. We're not like the literally only person drafting it, but we're very close. Um, there's a couple good white cards in this pack. There's three actually that we would all love to be playing. So we need to prioritize. There's absolutely no way that Student of Warfare doesn't come around. I think we want to take Cave of the Frost Dragon here and wheel the student. We could also take Adante Vanguard and wheel the student. But we're going to have way more than enough playables, I can already tell. Adante Vanguard is one of the better two drops for sure. But we'll end up with a lot of good two drops. And I think just getting a way to upgrade the mana base is worth it. And yeah, again, there's no possible way that Student of Warfare doesn't come around. Now we get, ooh, really tough pick. Mother of Runes and, Sh and Mute of Alder are both incredible. I think Mother of Runes probably does come around here. There's also Aired Mesa, but we're not doing that. Um, Mute of Alt won't come around. Mother of Runes probably will. Well, Mute of Alt could. I, I think we actually just can't pass Mother of Runes. I think white is very open, but if someone is even playing a little bit of white, this is just one of the best white cards ever printed, and it's so good for our deck. Yeah, I think we can't we can't risk even the like five percent chance of this not coming around, and then maybe it's you know forty percent that we get the mute vault on the wheel. Okay, easy library, especially having just passed a colorless land. This is uh exactly what this deck wants. I would potentially play either spear or, or uh, hero of blade hold if they wheel, but we want to take the library. Now we get Gideon. All right, uh, another the three cards that are contenders for best white card in the format are. Gideon, Thalia, and Mother of Runes. And now we have all three. Maybe Swords of Plowshares is up there too, so hopefully we can pick that one up. But uh, let's happily take Gideon. Now we get Figure of Destiny. Another great pickup. Both of these white cards are fine. We'll wheel at least one of them, but we'll definitely be taking the one drop here. I mean, this is just... This is just absurd. This deck is so powerful. What are the best things we could get here? Certainly any acceleration. Chrome Mox would be good. Uh, if we could get a Black Lotus and start the next pack, that'd be incredible. Um, we have three one-mana creatures, so I would like a few more. Ooh, Leon and Relic Order is excellent. Oust is good, too. And there's a chance Relic Order would come around. But we already have the path. I guess one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two cards are coming around. Probably, like, one of the red cards, and then Leon and Relic Warder, honestly. Yeah, I think we can risk this, actually. I wouldn't risk a one-drop. This is, this is like, very good, but not as good as Mother of Runes by any means. And Alistair's a really good removal spell, so I think we're going to take that and, and really try and wield the, uh, the Relic Warder. Now we get Baneslayer Angel for the board. Good pickup. Porcelain Legionnaire, one of the best two drops. That's amazing. And our two-drop slot is surprisingly light. Um, in general, this is the heaviest slot, so I, I'm not too worried about it. I think it will fill out, but uh, it is nice to get one of the elite ones, especially since we are potentially missing out on the Adanto Vanguard. Oh, yeah, I think we passed a pack that had Student of Warfare Adanto Vanguard, and that's the next pack we're going to get. No, no, one more pick until then. And we were thinking we would definitely take the Student, and we probably still should, even though we are a little light at two. We currently have four one-mana creatures and three one-mana interactive spells. Wait, sorry, three creatures, three interactive spells. Yeah, definitely Student of Warfare if we can take it. Our creature count is a bit low for Thalia, so I would like to get some more creatures. Okay, they do both come around, of course. We will take the student. I really wish we could take a Dante Vanguard, too. Bizarre to have two fetch lands and channel going that late, but easy student. This deck is looking extremely good. Right now, we're probably not playing the Arid Mesa. It thins one land out of the deck and pays one life, and I don't think that's worth it. 
But we'll bring it in against any deck that's not attacking our Light Turtle. Oh, Mutavolt came around. That's amazing. Very, very good news for us. Man, late channel, late natural already. That's interesting. You don't see that very often. I feel like green is often super cut. We wheel both white cards again. I think at this point we take the hero since we're light on creatures. Honestly, this deck is amazing. Like, we, there's not really any holes. I guess we'd like a few more two drops. And, and fast mana, maybe another colorless land. But we just need like a few more, like any two white two mana card and then any white three mana card just to fill out the curve, which is a good place to be in because I don't think it's going to be hard to pick up some late white cards. Strip Mine Wasteland would be a solid upgrade to this deck. Stone Coil Serpent is probably not going to make it, but could. Selfless Spirit, that will make it. That's a good card. Loon and Relic Order, that's a really good wheel. I mean, yeah, this is just ridiculous. There's only one card in our sideboard or main deck that we can't play, and that's one Goblin Guide, which is, like, the closest thing to playable in Mono White out of any non-white card. Yeah, we're going to be making a ton of cuts here. Very happy we took Cave of the Frost Dragon. Last pick, Plow Under. Okay. Can we get a Mox? Yes, we can. Wow, that's awesome. It's, this pack is just insane, actually. Bribery, Oko, Nissa, Grizzlebrand. Just absurdly good. And then also Palace Jailer, which is, again, I guess, that's the other card that's on the short list of best potential best white cards. Palace Jailer. Giver of Runes is amazing, too. We're going to take the Ruby. We're basically 100% to wheel one. Or we actually are 100% to wheel one of them. And either one would be amazing. If they both come around, it'll be a very hard decision. But we're going to take the mocks to start, and then we'll see what we want to do when we have more information. Okay, another really good pack for us. Usher of the Fallen and Port are both excellent. Usher should come around, so we'll lead with the Port. Not as good as Wasteland, but still a very good value land to pick up. Also, one of the best arts ever, in my opinion. I think the art on this card is very cool. It's hard to see in this frame, or like, when it's small like this, but if you have the real card, it's, it's very nice. Right now, we're probably not playing Skull Clamp in the main deck. We don't have great token makers. We didn't get Elspeth. Um, but we'll see. Whoa, weirdly bad pack for us. This is the first pack, all draft, that we haven't had a single card we want. I guess we take this for the sideboard. It's good with Selfless Spirit, but very bad car very bad pack for us. Now we get a good pack. Uh, Stoneforge Mystic, Phyrexian Revoker, Flooded Strand, and Gaia's Cradle. This isn't the best Cradle deck. I think in general this card is good in Mono White, but we don't have a lot of like Smuggler's Copter, stuff like that. Yeah, let's take the Revoker here and then maybe Wheel Stoneforge. Stoneforge is not playable right now, but it could become playable. Okay, I think I like taking the Lodestone Golem here. Karn is fine as well. But, especially against Storm, just having three tax effects can be pretty backbreaking. Yeah, I'll take the, uh, the Lodestone. Alright, what cards can we cut? Alice can probably move to the board. Skullclamp will go to the board for the aggro matchups. Armageddon, we can move the board. Man, for some reason, we're just not, this pack has not been nearly as good. I don't know if someone moved into white or what. Um, Karmic Guide is an okay value play, but really not that impressive in this deck. We have a great Storm matchup, but we might still just take Ulamog. Yeah, I think I'm going to take the Ulamog. It's hard to imagine us losing to Storm, but that makes it even more impossible. Now we get Flicker Wisp. That's a good pickup. And also good with the uh, the... Karmic Guide, so if that comes around, then maybe we can get some action going there. This land, this deck is probably going to be 15 lander. Ooh, 
I would love Wasteland or Silverblade, but I think we want to take the Wasteland here. Yeah, Silverblade Paladin's great, but cannot argue with another really good utility land. I think we're probably doing 15 lands, given that we have so many value lands, plus two Moxen. So, that's 17 here. We need to get four more spells. We can play Oust. We can play Baneslayer. Yeah, we have a few cards that we can play if we need to. Okay, Giver of Runes got taken, but we wheel the Palace Jailer, which honestly is the better card for us. Oust probably is a card we want to play also, because we're a little light on removal. So, we could run, and then we need two more spells. So, if the draft ended right now, that could be like, Clamp on the Geddon, maybe, or maybe Stone Coil Serpent. Actually, Stone Coil Serpent's pretty good. Probably we, we do want to be playing this card. And then we need one more spell, which right now would be maybe a one of Bane Slayer. No, probably Armageddon. Probably one of Armageddon. But now we get to replace it with Usher of the Fallen, which is a huge upgrade. Yeah, this deck looks so ridiculously strong. Two Moxen, great mana base, tons of one mana plays, a really high creature count, so Thalia and Brynwing Mirror are well supported. I think Palace Jailer is good. Um, yeah, this deck just looks amazing. It's missing a Urza Saga. That would be a great card, but other than that, pretty perfect. Um, Wheel of Misfortune would be amazing, but there's no way we ever splash, so it doesn't matter what we take. I like that this is even the second best Mox for us because it can level up Figure of Destiny. Okay, Stoneforge came around. Uh, not a main deck card. Do we play Guy's Cradle in this deck? We already have four non-basics. Hmm. I think I will take the Cradle, and if we play against decks that are like Monocolored and don't have not like we could cut wasteland for a uh, guy's cradle in some matchups. Now let's take Elspeth, good sideboard card. Savannah, okay. So then we'll throw in ten planes. That'll be twelve white sources. That seems fine. I wouldn't really want to go much lower than that though. So I do think we probably can't do cradle in the main. All right, well, we're like this. This is just an absolutely astoundingly good mono white deck. I'd be shocked if we didn't trophy, and I'll see you in round one. All right, we have our poor round one opponent who is about to get smacked in the face by a Mox Pearl. <laughs> we are on the draw, unfortunately, but the hand is phenomenal. We will keep. Lead on Mother of Runes. It's sort of... The interaction with Student of Warfare and Mana Tithe is sort of funny. Like, it's... If we just don't level it up, it's pretty clear that we have the Tithe. So, we'll see how that how that ends up developing. Turn 1 Ancestral Re Vision, okay. That's a card that's good on turn 1, but the kind of deck that plays it is a good matchup for us. We get to untap with Mother of Runes. Play Student of Warfare, and I think I'm just going to pass and hold up Mana Tithe. It's sort of clear that we have it, but if they don't play a spell here, that and then we get to play Adeline and make a token, that's really good for us. Okay, I will just tie this. It's not a good, it's not a very exciting thing to tithe because it still just goes to the graveyard, but it does something. Okay, Port's a good draw. Let's play the Adeline this turn though, and I'm just gonna play Planes because we're not gonna port this turn and probably not next turn either. And I am going to leave back the Mother of Runes here. I think that people do, should attack with this more than they do. But against a deck that has red mana, and when we have like already a lot of pressure in play, I think we don't need it. Knight of the Reliquary, okay. So this turn I will level up the student and then, and then port them, I think. So we go land, level up, level up. And then we'll attack with everything. So they're taking nine. Yeah, this seems totally fine for us. I'm not going to use the Mother of Runes here. Let's just pass and then tap their Inspiring Vantage. Inspiring Vantage. 
They only have one forest or plains, which is sort of funny. They can sack their breeding pool. So if they sweep our board, we're in pretty bad shape. But if they don't have a board sweeper, I like our position a lot. This looks like a very good matchup for Wasteland, that is for sure. Armageddon 2. So Rough Temptation does absolutely nothing. So we'll give this protection from blue. Oust. Okay, do we win now? We can oust their... We can oust one of their creatures, then play Brinwing there. And they'll be at 12. We give this Adeline protection from the other color. It hits for 6 by itself. They don't quite die. Um, I think it's better just to play Brinwing there, plus use the... Um, yeah, Brindley Mayor Plus used the port. Oh, a uh, slight misplay here. We should have played Brindley Mayor first. Yeah, we'll just attack with everything. If they want to double block this, that's fine. We should we should have attacked with everything. Or I uh, played Brindley Brind Wing Mayor first, so our ad line would be a 6 4. Okay, so they block like this and go to one. We can almost animate this for the win, but we can't quite. All right, fair enough. So punish for not playing the Vryn. I still think we're in a really good position, though. So we'll play land, play wingmare, then pass and tap their inspiring vantage in their upkeep. Oh, still on F6 because we have the uh, the Mother of Runes. All right, so we take down Five Color Bant in game one. Should be a very good matchup. I think Armageddon is good. What do we not want? Oust seems fine. Maybe we just run it back. Run the, or actually, no, we could probably cut Lodestone for Armageddon. Yeah, let's do that, and then on the play, I mean, we'll probably shoot this for both matchups. Lodestone seems not as amazing in this matchup as in some. On the draw with a very good hand, we'll keep. Four mana sources is a lot, but with both Figure of Destiny and Student of Warfare, we have tons of mana sinks. So let's play Figure of Destiny and Student on turn one because they're the ones that can attack more effectively. Next turn we can just level this up twice and level this up once to hit them for five. Ren and Six would be annoying here. I could kill one of our guys. We could kill the Ren and Six then, but I just I still don't want that. This looks like it might be a Bane Fire. Yeah, Bane Fire for one on the student. Fair enough. Port. Interesting draw. I think we will port them. Let's just play the Raven Inspector and then port them. And we'll tap their green white land. So in our turn, we'll have four mana. So we could crack the clue. Okay, they play Magda. Interesting. Sun Gold Sentinel. Good draw. So let's go land. Attack with both. 
If they block the figure of destiny, I'm just going to let that go through. I don't want to let them make treasure tokens. Yeah, this is fine. Then we place on Gold Sentinel, exile their Banefire, and pass and port their, uh, their I think, blue-white here. Blue is just the scariest color. We need to find an Armageddon. Oh my gosh, come on, deck. Crack this. Oh, no, why? That's just pretty devastating. We're playing 15 lands, we've drawn seven. Tap their red, I guess. So they can get, yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter. I don't think we can win this game. Like, we kept a really good hand. Kept a three lander, and then since th then we've drawn four lands and one sun gold sentinel. Gruel signet, okay. Young pyromancer, sure. They're down to one card. Okay, that's a good draw. That was probably our best draw. Not gonna attack now. They could sack a land and get a fetch land and then kill our, uh... oh wait. Well, we could give this unblockable from one color, but no, no, they could still. So we could give this unblockable from green and then attack, but that would just be a trade. Um, and this is gonna be really good. It's, we, it's like, we have enough mana that we can just make this a dude that's always hexproof and always impossible to block. They sack their planes. All right, let's hop their blue source, I think. Then we pass turn. Hopefully we can draw Armageddon, Palace Jailer, Council's Judgment, something like that. Abbot of Carol Keep into Burst Lightning. They can't kick it, but they can kill our Sun Gold Sentinel, which is annoying. There's some argument to just holding up the Sun Gold Sentinel activation instead of using the port. I still think we're in decent shape though if we were just play if we're just passing back and forth when we have a Gideon going. They have better top decks than we do almost certainly. But we have mostly spells in our deck. They still don't have enough mana to kick the burst lightning. They only have four. This knight is becoming huge, though. It's already a 5-5. Five, five. It is a little sad that these two are both gone, because they're very, very good top decks when you have a ton of mana in the late game. So they do burst lightning our Sun Gold Sentinel, no surprise there. They don't have any attack, so they just pass. We draw a spell, please. Okay. Not a very exciting one, but I'll still play it. Whoops. And we're going to hold the rest of our lands for Armageddon. So take out this. Yes. Pass back, tap their blue source again. I guess we also attack for two. No, I want to be able to have good blocks if they attack with the Knight of the Reliquary. Another land from them. They probably just pass. Portend themselves. Honestly, I would have portended... Uh, well, no, that makes sense with the Knight of the Reliquary to shuffle. But there's some argument to portending us. Well, I guess in this situation, if the holding pattern favors us, then just stalling doesn't really help them, so they probably do need to be proactive and make something happen. They chose to not shuffle, so they want at least one of the cards. No attacks. Oh, hmm. All right. I'll very happily accept this trade.
Remember, all right. Tax effect not too relevant at this stage. We cast the wingman and pass. This one night of the reliquary is really holding us back. Hopefully we can find Path, Palace Jailer, Oust, or um, Council's Judgment. Hmm, I wonder what they're getting with this. Fractured Identity probably, I guess, to, to take our Gideon. That would make the most sense. Unholy Heat. That can kill Gideon too. It's way worse at killing Gideon though, so could be worse. We pass and tap. I think I'm gonna tap, I guess uh, we don't need to tap anything here. We know what they're drawing. Well, we can at least start attacking in the air, but we do need to draw some more spells. Thalia, hilarious. We'll attack them for two in the air, and pass and tap their black source, because they only have one black source, and they have at least two of every other color. They probably are just flashing for Golos, but they could be playing Niv-Mizzet, although we haven't seen that many color, that many spells that would make sense with Niv-Mizzet. <laughs> the old four mana Signet. Council Judgment, there we go. I guess this does cost five. And now we can attack with everything. Yeah, let's just attack with everything. Give them as few draw steps as possible. They can kill some of our stuff, but that's fine. They might just kill off two of the knights, lock Young Power Mentor in one, tokens on here. Yeah, so they're going to take five. They're dead in two attacks. We still have th uh, the double tax effect and Mishra's, uh, and uh, Richard and Port. So tap one land. They cost two more, so they can cast a four drop, but they can't play a five drop. That'd be hilarious if they talk. Oh, wait, no, now they can because they get the signet. Okay, well, the taxes probably aren't too relevant. Um, let's tap them out of double white, I guess. And I guess with the Cygnus, they have a ton of green, so we'll tap blue-white. Oh, no. Are you kidding me? This is, like, the worst possible thing for us. That's just awful. Ugh. Alter Gargaroth is so annoying for, for aggressive decks. We already used our Council's Judgment. It has Vigilance. Yeah, as horrible as it is, I think we just have to block with all six creatures here. Otherwise, they're just going to get more and more Gargaroth value every single turn. This card is just disgustingly good against us. Like, we could just take a hit and go for a Mother of Runes block next turn. Actually, I'd, I'll do that. We'll, we'll let them get one more other Gargaroth hit in and then just hope to hit something off of... Uh, I mean, we could just find Palace Jailer or something. Oh, I'm going to play the land just... To, I guess they can't have Manlik or anything. That was just amazing. I'm so happy about that cheese. Beating Elder Gargaroth is not easy for a white deck, but if you just draw the perfect card, then you can. We draw our extra card. They're at two. We will tap. Oh, whoops. Wait. All right. Tap this. Doesn't really matter. I mean, yeah, I think... Basically, they just need a board sweeper this turn, but then even if they do find a board sweeper, they're at two and we're the monarch. All right. So we uh, had some good top decks after flooding ridiculously hard, and we're 2-0. I'll see you in round two. All right, we have our round two opponent with our disgustingly strong mono white deck. Hopefully we can keep the winning going. Win and move up to uh, sole possession of fourth. I really, I've been, like yesterday I played two leagues and trophied them both and then lost like a ton of ground. <laughs> so like, yeah, some people play a lot. I don't think we're gonna be able to be number one in the trophy leaderboard, but we'll be up there. We are on the draw here, unfortunately, against Trial 53. 
Oof. Lands and spells, but this hand is way too slow. Yeah, we can do better than this. All right, this hand is much better. We're going to keep and put back. I think we go in library here, probably. I'm going to put back a planes. A little bit greedy. We could get punished for that, but I think it's a good place to be. And then if they go... Okay, against Shelldock, I'll pass. We definitely want to just go library on one because it's probably going to be a grindy matchup. Mmm, that's a nightmare. Forest is just the absolute last thing we wanted to see there. Now we're just, like, basically dead for game one. <laughs> I mean, not literally, but, like, they're an Elder Gargaroth deck. You just always lose Elder Gargaroth when you play white decks. I, I think, I mean, we're in fine shape, but I do think blue-green is the worst possible matchup for mono-white in a lot of ways. Or at least, like, any deck that's playing mid-range green threats and has other forms of interaction, too, is going to be very tough. Okay, that's a good draw. Let's draw a card. Land. Revoker. And I think we shut down the carry added. And we'll pass. Could have also shut down Survival of the Fittest, but I think I like attacking their mana a bit early on. Raging Ravine. Okay, a lot of colors over there. Well, that's really bad. That undid all the value we got off the library. Now we just aren't really doing anything. Um, all right, we'll untap. Planes, draw a card. Good draw. I think we want to Leon and Relic Order to take out Survival of the Fittest. Or do we just go after their mana? No, let's take out Survival of the Fittest. And then we can... just give this protection from green and hit for two. We need to get some damage going. Next turn, we're hoping to be able to play Gideon, but we might have to do something else, especially if we need to oust. Okay, another Signet is fine. They have a lot of mana over there. All the Signets and Moxon and Time Twister stuff are really bad against Thalia Brunwing there. This seems like, okay, the more I've seen of their deck, the more I think this is actually a pretty good matchup, but we're still very behind in this game. So let's go, I think we just attack with both. If they block the Avacyn's Pilgrim on something, we'll give it protection, of course, but, okay, they block like this. Oh, whoa, weird. Okay, well, we'll give this protection from green. Take them off of a mana. Then we, I think, so we could go either Gideon plus a dude. Maybe we do want to just put more pressure on the board actually and not library this. Yeah, that seems probably worth it. We can still library next turn if we want to. Oh no, we can't. Mm, then I actually am in library because finding more answers, like finding Council of Judgment and stuff, is going to be really important in this matchup, I think. Palace Jailer, interesting draw. We still want to play Gideon first, but that is a good one. The problem is they could just go, like, upheaval. So no matter how much marginal advantage we're get accumulating, it's just not enough. But yeah, they do just get upheaval here. Oh, channel? Interesting. Channel Ugin would be good. I mean, yeah, channel most things are good here. Emrakul would not win the game instantly, but it would probably win the game. Actually, we could maybe beat it. So we have Palace Jailer in hand. What are you channeling for? 
Yeah, the more I've seen in their deck, this is actually a very good matchup. I think. I mean, we, we could lose. We'll lose this game, and they might just have to turn two channel next game, but like we're, we're a quick clock. We pressure their life total. We make all their spells cost more, and it looks like they're not playing mid-range green creatures, which is what I was afraid of. I have no idea how much mana they paid. I, yeah, we'll just see what they cast. It looks like it's pretty big, though. And we're cool to Eon's Torn. All right. So, if we have to sacrifice six permanents, all four creatures, and two lands, and then we can keep Gideon plus enough lands for Palace Jailer. They could also animate man lands, which they should definitely do. And, I mean, yeah, if they have any more action, we're in bad shape. But we could also potentially just go for the kill, I guess. If we just sacked all our lands. We'll see if they attack us or Gideon. They attack us. Okay. Do we want to keep Palace Jailer around? Or do we want to, do we want to go for the Palace Jailer? I think we do. So let's sack one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we need to just hope they're holding lands, basically. Looks like they have another play. That's pretty bad. Maybe it's just going to be like Coercive Portal or something slow. Jeez, they have another big play. Not many things that cost this much mana we can beat here. In the same turn, they played Channel or played Emrakul. Hydroid Crisis for six. Okay, that's game unless we draw a Mox. Stone Coil Serpent. That's game. All right. So playing against a strange deck, tons of mana rocks. Should be a good matchup. Let's bring in Armageddon. Hmm. Well, I think Alist is fine. Maybe we just run it back. I think I, another matchup where I think I like Armageddon better than, than Lodestone Golem. They do have artifact mana, but they need a lot of mana. I think if they have like a, a Signet or two, but we Armageddon them, we'll still win that game. Okay, let's keep. I think we go in library again. If we had, yeah, I think we, well, huh. Maybe we just want to play Thalia next turn. Yeah, turn two Thalia seems pretty good against them. Okay, I think we'll actually do that. We're just gonna go, we're just gonna curve out and not go into the library plan this game with the Thalia in hand. Especially against a deck playing Time Twister. All right, turn two Thalia, hit for one. Sun Gold Sentinel was not a good draw there. We just wanna draw lands. Sakura Tribe Elder, come on. All right, that's a good draw. We'll pay one for that. Attack with everything. They'll block this and take one. And then we can play either Sun Gold Sentinel or Porcelain Legionnaire. I guess just the Sentinel, probably. Yeah, they both hit for three, and this is uh, Incidental Graveyard Hate, which could do something, and we can also give it Hexproof if we need to, since we already have three different powers. So we have six power on board. We have Thalia in play. Still, uh, Sakura Tribe Elder was the worst thing for us last turn, but we're still in good shape. We draw Wasteland. Okay, very good draw. Let's just kill their Raging Ravine. Go to combat. I guess they're getting channel here. We're going to make it as painful as possible for them to um, play channel. Oh, they just concede. Huh. All right. They were going to go down to 12. I guess they couldn't play Emrakul. Yeah, they probably had Emrakul in hand, but they would. They only had 11 life to pay, so they could not get up there high enough. On the draw now. 
Do we want to make any changes? I don't think so. We could bring in the cradle. No, let's just run it back. Let's run it back. Hopefully we get a turn one Thalia hand. Land Mox Thalia. Mm. This hand is very fair. I think I will keep it because it is pretty disruptive. Yeah, it, no one drop is bad, of course, and I hope we draw Mox, but Revoker and Leon and Relic Warder both take them off of a mana, and then Vryn, Vryn Wingmare taxes their deck a lot. And we have a mix of lands and spells. Can we draw Mox, though? Yes! Oh my gosh, that was so good. Okay, so let's play turn one Selfless Spirit since we don't know which uh, what things to name with Revoker yet. Then you can go turn two Wingmare, turn three Revoker plus Relic Warder. Okay, that's a little annoying. Okay, now that we drew land, actually, I'm just going to Revoker this, I think, rather than play the Wingmare. Actually, no, let's still play the Wingmare. Yeah, I think this is still worth it. Take two. So they get four mana this turn, but their co spells cost one more. So if they want to go, like, Signet into Signet, they can't do that. And we can go, and if they just tap out for one Signet, we can go... Revoker, oh wow, good draw. Let's hit them for four in the air. And then I kind of think we want to just go Thraben Inspector Flicker Wisp here. Like, yeah, we could shut down their mana, but I think just add it. Then we'll go to seven power in the air. That seems worth it. So we'll play Thraben Inspector first and then Flicker the Thraben Inspector. This also puts multiple permanents onto the board, which is good if they do end up uh, hitting us with an Annihilator attack. Mystical Tutor for Channel again. Channel doesn't do much here, though. They could get Pyroclasm. That would be really bad here, actually. We would just die to a Pyroclasm. They get Channel, though, so I think we can beat that. They have to spend three to play the Channel. Then they only, only have four. Uh, yeah, they can't play Emrakul here. If they play Ulamog or something, that's not that scary. I guess the, the Ulamog that exiles two permanents could be a little bit of a problem. They take out two flyers. Yeah, that could be a little bit bad. What? Okay. We draw Armageddon, which certainly seals the deal if the deal was not already sealed. Okay. So take down some sort of weird teamer deck. Uh, good start. We are, uh, going into the finals, fighting for the trophy. See you there. All right, we have our round three opponent with our busted mono white deck. Hoping for a turn one Thalia, as always. Also hoping to win the die roll, which we do. Ooh, well, not keeping that. Okay, this hand is good. Um, I think we put back the Lodestone Golem. We have Mana Tithe for their turn one Soul Ring. And turn two Thalia. I really hope they do play one drop, because we're not going to have another window to play this Mana Tithe for a long time. Especially with Ollie in play, and it costs you two. Okay, yeah. I mean, not an exciting thing to Tithe, but I'll do it. Now, do we want to play Thalia or Sun Gold Sentinel here? Not Revoker. Um, They're likely to just play Mono White also. Palace Jailer. We have no non-creatures, though, so I think I am going to play the Thalia. Like, maybe they, their turn, their play for next turn was GTA or Copter or something like that. This is a great card in the matchup, but we do need to land. Oh, no. Okay, they're just going a little bit bigger than us. This is, like, our worst matchup. Um, basically, anything they get here would be bad. Yeah, Batter Skull. I guess we can revoke our name Stoneforge Mystic, but we need to draw some lands. Ouch. All right, attack for two. And we'll play Revoker, naming Stoneforge Mystic.
All right, so the Batter Skull may be stuck in their hand for a while. Still, we're in really bad shape, though. We're, we're missing land drops. We don't have that much pressure. They're still at 18. So I don't really know what our plan is here. I mean, maybe they, them flooding is a plan. Um, and if we draw land into land, then we're okay, maybe. Okay, they solitude our Phyrexian Revoker, probably. Then they can put Batter Skull into play. Which we can still be if we get to Palace Jailer, but we need to, we like cannot afford to continue missing land drops at all. Land, land, yes. And I think we're just gonna crack the clue rather than port them or do anything else. We absolutely have to get to Palace Jailer next turn, so. We'll do what we can to maximize the chances of that. We can take a hit or two from this Batter Skull and still win if we become the Monarch, but we can't afford for them to go like land Spectral Procession here. We need to be able to preserve the Monarchy. So we take four. When we're on the draw, I think we're going to become a control deck. And then in the play, we'll just try and go under them again and hope that our draw will end up a little bit better. Okay, Kithian's fine. Hopefully no other play. All right, come on, planes. We're dead to Mana Tithe. We're dead to not drawing a planes. But if we draw planes and they don't have Mana Tithe, we might have a chance. Come on, deck. Yes! All right. Palace Jailer. And we're just hitting the germ here. Nice. It resolves. Okay. Well, we have a chance now. They could have Cathar Commando, but we still have three blockers. If they have Cathar Commando into removal spell, we probably die. If they ever become the monarch, I think we probably die. But if we can become if we can remain the monarch for the next four or five turns, we'll win. They could also put in the play a sword. I don't think any sword gives protection from white that's still in the format, though. I think it's just black green, blue green, and blue red. If they put in GTA, then we just die easily. Our best draws include Path, um, Council's Judgment, like removal spells would be good, and Flyers would be good to make sure that they can't get in for get in damage in the air. Flicker Wisp would be an excellent draw. Swords of Plowshares, Thalia. okay. Well, we have two blockers, they have two attackers. We gotta really hope they don't have an, a third removal spell. Okay, we can beat this. Well, actually, we, that's actually pretty bad. Yeah, I don't know if we can beat that. They don't have any attacks this turn. We just draw another land. Okay. Yeah, I think we're dead here. Unless we draw Path off the Monarch. They could have Karmic Guide, so we're going to go after the creatures first. I don't think there's any spells they could have that would make their Swords of Plashers be relevant. We do, and then there's no unexpectedly absent or anything. So there's no way where tapping this land means that we can't play in any in instant speed interaction that we draw. So we'll pass. If they attack with everything, they are going to become the Monarch. Because we only have four blockers and they'll have five attackers. Yeah, we'll be in really, really bad shape if we don't draw a Path to Exile here. Okay. Then we'll tap there. Planes. This is going to be really bad. We're going to have to double block the hero. We're going to lose a lot of our board. They're going to become the monarch. If they have another play, too, we're just, we're certainly dead. If they have, like, time walk. 
Recruiter of the Guard. That's probably good enough to win also. We'll see what they get with it, though. Yeah, this is a bad matchup. They are doing the same thing we're doing, but they're just playing a slightly higher curve, which is the worst possible situation. Um, we can't really go under them very effectively, and we can't go over them. Oh, geez, intrepid adversary. Okay, maybe they'll just pass and take a turn off. Okay, they, they found the line. Good attack. This is a terrible attack. They should not do this. Well, it, they'd still win if they did this attack. Yeah, they, this is what they should do. Make sure they become the monarch. No, oh, all right, they're gonna let us retain the monarchy if we want to. That would mean we lose our entire board, though. They have intrepid adversary on top. I think our out is, what is our out? Like flicker wisp for pa on palace jailer. Into path. Hmm. Let's trade to the stone forge. Maybe we just do this. Yeah, let's do this. They become the monarch. We still have palace jailer around though. So flicker wisp into path exile. Because we then that lets us be the monarch and lets us answer their intrepid adversary. Parallax wave would be such a good draw, but we don't have it. And the hero of blade hold really got us there. I think we're going to be falling in this one. On the play, we have a decent chance of being able to go under them. Especially if we draw Mox. Stone Coil Serpent. Interesting draw, actually. Let's attack them with both. So they'll trade this Kithian with the Palace Jailer and chump block the Recruiter. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, we can just give this... Yeah, we can give this Hexproof from White and just become the Monarch. That seems better. So we'll exile there. Hero Blade Hold. Activate this. Oh, wait. Ugh. I misplayed this pretty poorly. We need to play Mother of Runes first because we can't activate this yet. So this was the worst attack. We should have attacked with both or neither. Um, or play, or what we should have done is just played Mother of Runes first. Okay, they just chump block. That's actually good for us. Land. Stone Coil for five. Mother of Runes. Okay, so they play Intrepid Adversary. They can give all their creatures plus two, plus two, but they still can't swing through Stone Coil Serpent. And then next turn we can give Stone Coil Serpent protection from white, or probably just attack with Sun Gold Sentinel, actually, and become the Monarch. They still have the Batter Skull going, but we're actually in not the worst shape. They're still drawing two cards a turn, but we're going to become the Monarch here. It'll be interesting if they attack here. I don't think they should attack with anything. They didn't pay twice. That's sort of weird. Very strange attack. Do we want to trade Palace Jailer with one of these soldiers? I don't think so. We're definitely blocking here. Maybe we do, actually. Yeah, you know what? We, I think we should block like this. If we draw Flicker Wisp, I'll regret it, but I think this seems pretty good. Okay, that's fine. Actually, that's pretty bad. We need to draw... Sp oh, yeah, that is bad. I was really hoping they didn't have another spell there. We need to draw a creature that has t uh, power other than 
Oh, they oh, they flip Kithian. Yeah, I don't really see how we can win now. They can make our mother friend attack Kithian. Or attack Gideon. Then we need to find a removal spell for the intrepid adversary this turn. Interesting draw. Oh, wait, wait. This is not... This is okay. So we can just give this protection from white. And we'll play Gideon, attack them, and then if we draw a path, we can hold up path, otherwise we can um, use port to tap their island. So they're going to be able to come to Monarch again. But we're at least going to get to draw one card here. And if we draw a path, maybe we have a, a, a good chance of winning. S strange and swingy game. The Exile of Recruiter of the Guard. All right, we'll draw a card. Path. Ah, oh, dang it. Oh, pff, that was silly. We obviously should have done that in their upkeep. I just was thinking like, okay, now that we didn't draw Path, we're tapping their land. So we, we didn't deny them one blue mana this turn. That could matter, they, especially with the Batter Skull. Somewhat unlikely, too. I think we, yeah, I think we were probably going to lose this game either way. But it would be better if they did not have that island. So we'll see how they attack here. We can, I'm, I'd be thrilled to trade the knight with the Intrepid Adversary. If They, they want to kill our Gideon and also take away the Monarchy. So they're a little bit pulled in multiple directions. They're probably equipping their Batter Skull to the Intrepid Adversary here. Okay, to the Soldier, sure. So how do they attack? They could send maybe both a Gideon and the Soldier at, uh, and this at us. Both of these two a Gideon and not attack with Intrepid Adversary. Okay, so they're just going to let us stay the Monarch. No point in blocking here, but this seems not too bad for us. We can kill their Gideon this turn. They're gaining a bunch of life, but I think we might be able to just overwhelm them with card advantage if we're able to retain the monarchy, which is possible. Student of Warfare, okay. So we could give Sun Gold protection. Yeah, we can we could just kill their Gideon here. Is that worth it? Because then they get to become the monarch. Hmm. No, I think we need to... I think the Monarch is, like, the name of the game here. So... Do we just play Student of Warfare and pass them? Or do we attack them, their Gideon, for three? No, I think we want to leave back all of our blockers. So we'll play Student of Warfare, level it up three times, and then pass for the port available. I'm not worried about holding up activation for this because we have Mother of Rune to give protection. And we don't have Armageddon in our deck, but they could have Armageddon in there, so there's no reason to play another colorless land. This is worse than a plane tier, of course. Okay, Mother of Runes might be able to take over this game. They don't really have any attacks into Mother of Runes. And we're drawing two cards a turn now. They don't have any flyers. So maybe we're actually ahead now? I kind of think we are. Cave of the Frost Dragon is a below average draw. The best draw is still just interactive spells, Council of Judgment, stuff like that. Tap their island. And not going to have six, of course, because we have Mother of Runes, but we will see what they do here. If they had a mother of runes of their own, that would be very bad. They've already gone through Dismember, Swords of Plowshares, and Solitude. So they have to be running pretty low on instant speed removal spells. And that means our mother of runes is even better. 
Okay, they animate Gideon. That's a strange play. I guess this makes sense. Um, hmm. Yeah, yeah, this is a good attack. We can double block the soldier token. I think we just jump block the soldier, or we just block the uh, soldier with mother of runes and then give mother of runes protection from white and jump block the Gideon with our 2 2. Yeah, let's do that for this turn. If they have a way to kill the Mother of Runes, they have a way to kill the Mother of Runes. I don't think we win by blocking in another way here, like chump blocking or taking damage. This also prevents life gain, which is not irrelevant. So next turn we can kill their Gideon with our Student of Warfare if we want to. We really need to hope to draw a creature though. Drawing back-to-back -back lands is very bad. And it looks like they do have a spell. Hanger Backwalker for three. That's not too bad. Can we get a Flicker Wisp off the top? Raven Inspector also not... Well, yeah, this actually is sort of bad. Now they have five attackers, so even we, they can become the Monarch. Okay, we do draw a creature. So we just do this and pass. We have four blockers, so if they animate their Gideon and attack with everything, oh, we're just drawing bricks. We need to draw creatures. We have such a high creature count in this deck. Um, they can become the Monarch, though, so that might seal the deal. I mean, we can become the Monarch again, but their board is just so much bigger than ours, and we have nothing in our hand, even though we're, we've been drawing two cards a turn for a while. If they do attack with everything, we can first strike down the Intrepid Adversary with Student of Warfare. And then the rest of their attack is less impressive. Equip Batter Skull to Hanging Back Walker. Okay, that's good for us, for sure. What is the, What are they doing? They get their Hanging Back Walker. Oh! Okay, yeah, we can't give protection from colorless because this isn't giver of runes. All right. Fair enough. So we need to chump block this, which I think we want to do with Mutavolt. Now we need, we need to find an answer to Hanging Back Walker, though. We're still drawing two cards a turn, though, and we have multiple answers. We have Alst, we have Path, we have Council of Judgment. <clears throat> I guess those are our only three. But still, that's three answers. We're drawing two cards a turn. We cannot save this uh, Mutavolt with our Mother of Runes, unfortunately. Hangerback Walker also shuts down our Sun Gold Sentinel unblockable thing. So we need to find an answer for this very quickly. Okay, not a bad one. Let's play Cave of the Frost Dragon tapped, past turn, and then tap their island and their upkeep again. They have enough planes that we're not going to be able to cut them out of mana, but we could cut them out of blue mana if they have, like, Fractured Identity or Time Walk or something, like a Sorcery Speed blue card. We could strand that in their hand. Spell? Okay, Wingmare. It's a flyer, at least. Was not expecting such a grindy game from two... Uh, Raven Inspector Dax. If they just do the same thing that it, oh, okay. Yeah, this is the right play. They should have done this last turn. It doesn't really matter, but they do that. They Then they untap it with a Gideon, swing for 10. We have to chump block with Sun Gold Sentinel this turn. That's just gonna, so right now we're chump blocking every turn. They're gaining like a million life a turn and we're drawing two cards a turn. Oh no, okay. I mean, with every single play, it becomes harder. We make a knight. We can kill the Gideon, though. 
if they attack with a hanger back walker, which they will. All right, so let's jump block with this. Oh wait, no, it does. No, we we can't kill the the Gideon. Yeah, this is gonna be really really tough. I maybe Council's Judgment could do it. Council's Judgment, the hanger back walker, then give this protection from something, kill one of their planeswalkers, and then just like keep on drawing hot. Okay, that's how it starts. So, hmm, let's see. We can play Council's Judgment, exile hanger back walker. I think is definitely the start. We don't really have a good attack with our hero of blade hold, unfortunately. We could animate the cave of the frost dragon. And then if we attack with a hero, the exalted would make the cave a lethal attacker on their Gideon. Yeah, I think that's the play. Are we worried about dying on the backswing? No. We can kill both of their planeswalkers, then they get to become the monarch and hit us for a lot of damage. Wait, actually, would we be dead? Because we're going to have to tap our mother of runes if we want to kill this Gideon. Um, maybe we just let them keep their Gideon uh, Blackblade alive. Or this Gideon alive. Battleforged. Wait, well, okay, they have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 11, 15 damage with the Batter Skull. So we are dead if we tap all of our board. So we just need to attack with just this and the Hero Blade Hold. Yeah, let's do this. So, Cave of the Frost Dragon at Gideon, Hero of Blade Hold at their other Gideon. And then both tokens of the Gideon. They can eat both of the tokens with these guys. And then maybe just let Gideon take three. Or they could just block this, double block this, and let us keep the tokens. But yeah, this uh, we'll see what they do. Attack and attack. We want to make sure to stack our triggers correctly. So Batter Skull goes on the stack first. So it resolves last. And we can tap the Mother of Runes to give one of our things protection to, like, save our bla uh, Hero of Bladehold if they try to kill it. So they're probably just going to block the two Soldier Tokens. And, okay, they are going for the Gideon. Do we want to tap the Mother of Runes to save it? Or, sorry, sorry, they're going for the, the Hero. I think it is worth it to save this. Because we're not dead on the backswing. Yeah, let's save it. We're dead to a removal spell on the hero of, on the student of warfare. And we don't, I mean, we're F6 now, we have no plays. But we get to kill their Gideon. We draw a land for the monarch, classic. Um, so if they can kill our thing and equip, we do die. They have four, five, six, seven, eight. They have 13 damage, and then if they equip the battle skull, they have more. But we can block something with the student of warfare, and it's a 4 4 with double strike, so it blocks well. Um, we're dead to one or two removal spell, or one or two mana removal spell that doesn't gain life, that doesn't gain us life. So like, we could beat an oust still potentially. Path to exile would win though. They play planes. They have one card left. They still have this clue which they can crack. What a wild game! Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten lands down. So we have five lands left out of fifteen. They equip the Battle Skull here, makes sense. And they get in and then attack with everything. And we go to two. Oh, they just get that indestructible. Okay, this is fine. We, I mean, we take a, it, it's not good, but it's not game ending. We block here, take 10. Then we can kill their Gideon on the backswing. They do become the Monarch. But we have Hero of Blade Hold. Yeah, I mean, they, we're not dead. We can kill their Gideon pretty easily. If we find a removal spell for the Intrepid Adversary, we're actively ahead. If we can find Path to Exile or Oust. 
Ribbon Inspector would also be a phenomenal draw. They are at 45, but we should be able to deal, deal damage in pretty big chunks with Student of Warfare and stuff, so I'm not too worried about their life total. We just need to get enough of a board presence where we don't need to worry about the Monarchy anymore. This has been one of the most like intense mono-white mirrors I've ever played. We're like somehow still using all of our mana every turn. Um, okay. I think we just tap Mother of Runes to give Student of Warfare protection and attack here. I don't think we want to attack with a hero. Oh, actually, we, we do want to become the Monarch, though, too. So let's give this protection from white, animate this, and then attack that way. And then we're going to play, I think, just play out both of our creatures. So we we'll tap here. So this is Gideon, this is them. We get to become the Monarch, and then we'll play two blockers, or two creatures that are likely going to be used as blockers. Just crack the clue. Okay, good. All right, we get to be the Monarch again. We're down to 14 cards in the library. We'll play Vrindwing Mare. This slightly plays around Mana Tithe, because now they can't tie their figure. Oust. All right, we're getting there. I think we actually might be able to start turning the corner now. We're still going to take, we're going to chill block this turn with our soldier token, but that's totally fine. Then we can oust their intrepid adversary and start beating down, and we close out the game quickly. They draw another land. Wow, what a wild game. They also are down to six minutes, and this is game one. They attack, of course. We chump block. They go to 50 life. Good thing that this doesn't give trample. Okay, good draw. Let's oust this. Oh, cost one more, yep. Then we'll play Adeline, which is huge. And attack them with everything. Uh, actually, well, we'll leave back Mother of Runes. And I guess Bryn Moon there too. Because I really don't want to lose the monarchy. But then we'll attack them with everything else. Oh, ah, uh, whoops. Okay, so we're gonna have one okay, they concede. Wow. What a game. I thought we were so far behind at multiple points in that one. Really, really intense one, but that was a lot of fun. So, playing against another white deck that's very similar, but they have Batter Skull and more removal. Do we want to bring in this package and go a little bit bigger? I think so. In that case, we should also... I think we cut Wasteland for Planes. And I don't think we want to bring in Skull Clamp. We can definitely cut Lodestone Golem. Um, honestly, all the rest of these cards seem decent. We could cut Hero on the draw, but I think I like that card. Stone Call is fine. Maybe it's Elspeth. Yeah, maybe we just don't go that big. I do think having a board sweeper is good. They're never going to play around it. Oh, and then maybe we just cut Burning Wing there. Yeah, that seems fine. We'll run like this. On the play, I'll want a 16th land if we're going to go up to a Bane Slayer Angel. But on the draw, this seems fine. And we get Mox. No Mox, but a good hand. We have Mother of Runes, which is maybe as good as a Mox. They have a couple ways to kill it, but hopefully they uh, they don't have one in hand. They're also down to five here.
Planes go. Oh, Lotus Petal. Whoa, they kept a Lotus Petal hand when they went to five. They're really trying to be aggressive. I respect it. Turn one to Dante Vanguard. We have the path to deal with it, but we're just going to play Mother of Runes first. Now, if they kill the Mother of Runes, we could be in trouble, but if we get to untap with Mom, then there's no real way we can lose. We'll take three. All right, we get to untap. Let's just play a double one drop. Go wide. This is going to make it really hard for them to get through damage. Then we'll pass. Definitely not attacking with Mother of Runes here. Contain the priest. Okay, that's fine. Parallax Wave is really the one card they could have here that would be problematic. They have no attacks. Oh, whoa. Okay. I'll block here. If they just, I'm fine to just let this go through. And then if they pay four life, I'll, I'll give this protection from white. Okay, so the end rule of that is that they take four, we take two. Hopefully we can draw land. All right, we'll play the Legionnaire, which is a really good blocker on this board. And then pass. I don't really see any need to attack for one with one of these things. We are on the defense here. They have one card, we have a stacked hand, so we just need to survive. Not Parallax Wave. Honestly, most four drops are bad here. Okay, that's fine. We can path that. They don't have any attacks. Land. Nice. So we can go... Just main phase path this. No need to play around with potentially letting them top deck Restoration Angel or anything. I guess we could upkeep it. Maybe that's slightly better, but... Uh, yeah, that is just better, but this is still totally fine. Exile this. Uh, do we want to attack? I think I will attack now. Yeah, this seems fine. Kithian, okay. They can get that indestructible, but still not that big of a problem. I guess it means we can't attack on the ground right now. They can see. All right, there we go. I mean, they needed to win that game and then another game in three minutes, and we were going to win that game, so makes sense. Let's pull up the deck list. This was our Trophy Mono White deck. That was just unbelievably good. We had two Moxon. We had a great mana base. Uh, all of our dual lands had moments of good greatness. Cave, Library, Mutable, Port, Wasteland. A very good low curve. Figure of Destiny and Student of Warfare were pretty sweet. The versatility of being able to like dump your mana into them late was very strong. Um, Revoker, Relic Warder, Thalia were all good disruptive cards. Really, just every card in this deck performed well. The real standout was probably Palace Jailer, um, in particular in game one, uh, or ga yeah, game one of round three. It was just a ridiculous game. Really long and grindy, but very sweet. Um, yeah, I mean, white was as open as it ever is, and we opened two pieces of power. Basically, when white is ridiculously open, you're always going to get a good deck that can trophy. The, the difference that makes it, like, 50-50 on whether you trophy to like 80-20, like this deck, is whether you have the fast mana and the value lands. And we were able to get both here in addition to just white being open so we could wheel everything. And that led to a great deck and a trophy. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.